Okay, so welcome back to the Higher Rockstar Talent Podcast. So I was having a conversation with someone the other day and they asked me, they said, Alan, man, with franchises today and royalty fees, you know, with the way everything is with prices, is it still worth it today? So I, I really started thinking about this and, and I gave him a bunch of reasons why it would work and why it wouldn't work. And I said, oh man, this would make a great podcast. So let's talk about that today. So if you're looking to open a franchise, you know, what are the royalties fees? What are they? You know, why do you pay them? Is it worth it? And with inflation today and the insanity of where goods and services and paper products and food products are so high today, at the end, we'll talk about the impact that that has. So now you have a business and you're paying royalty fees and royalty fees and franchise fees, and then you have the added on domino effect of what happens when all of these pricing and increases go up. Um, it really can set you up for some pretty painful some times in business. Seven reasons why I think, hell yeah, man, franchises are a great idea. And I've been in uh, franchises my entire life. And just recently, I've moved out of a, franch um, a national franchise into a smaller regional franchise. What franchise fees and royalty fees are, you know, there's a good reason for them. The person who in created the business, um, the franchisor, in some cases, some cases the franchisor has sold out to another company. But you know, there's value of why you, you pay these fees. And the first one is you're buying a proven system. You're buying a business in a box. The founder, which could be the franchise or today, or could have passed it on to somebody else, but they've made all the mistakes. They, they screwed everything up that possibly could be screwed up. They went through all the painful part. And now what they're doing is they're selling you the proven predictable system, right? And that's what it is. And what the franchisor does for those fees is they deliver training and guidance and the systems and processes and the support you need to win and be successful. Now, what happens is a lot of business owners, when they hear this, or a lot of people with a lot of money say is, oh, I can just invest in this. I can pop a manager in and the thing will run itself, right? It's the franchisor's job to make it successful. You know, their system works. I can just set it on autopilot pilot and forget it. And this, so many people fail from this and so many stories and lawsuits that happen, happen because of thinking exactly like this. I don't care what business you're in, you have to be there operating your business. You have to keep your finger on the pulse or you're going to fail. It doesn't matter what it is, franchise, not a franchise, you will fail if you don't, you're not there for your business. Now, if you spent years building systems and processes and you've, you've empowered people and trained and developed people to run the business for you, that's a different scenario. I'm talking about people that just get in the business with this fantasy that it's going to run itself. Doesn't happen. Now, when you buy into a franchise, you have a better chance of success because again, you know, from day zero, you're learning where the chips are stacked against you, what went wrong, you know, which things to avoid. That's what you're, you're buying and you're paying for. Another piece that I've learned the hard way recently is buying power. So when I was with the national brand, you know, anything that you buy because they're buying it in such a bulk, in such massive quantities for all of the franchisees, they're getting much better pricing with, with the distributors and the manufacturers. So for instance, this is why like you see companies like Burger King will offer like a $5 deal and you'll see McDonald's has a dollar menu or a $2 menu, whatever it is now. But for smaller operators, for off brands, new and upcoming companies that have a lot less locations, they can't even do that because if they do that, it'll cost them for every transaction that someone buys. So they just can't do it. So they're paying in some cases double for things like cheese and breads and packaging than, than a big brand is. You know, one of the things when I got into this other brand that I'm with today, I knew that I couldn't compete on price and I couldn't compete on technology. So I had to compete in other areas quality, speed of service, friendliness, throughput. These are the things that we mastered so we could be right next to a national brand and compete against them. The next one is networking. And I think this is one of the most underutilized things. You know, my mom was the franchisee in the brand that I grew up in and she never went to any networking events. I would go to all of them. These brands put together these conferences or they put together these meetings with where you get a bunch of like-minded people, franchisees, people that are in the same business that you're in, having the same problems that you're having, and they're putting them all in a room or within proximity to each other. You know, I remember this one time I was at a meeting and I was very frustrated because of this marketing thing I was trying. And someone across the room that I did not know said, hey, I did the same thing but I did this part a little differently and this is why it didn't work for you and worked for me. 
That one thing was worth the whole conference, whatever it cost to go there. So networking, but you got to participate in it. If you're going to get into, into some of these, these networking sessions, you have to participate. The next piece is support, right? Now support with a lot of franchises feels non-existent, right? Sometimes it feels like it's a double-edged sword. Um, I remember in the, in the brand that I was with, you know, if we, if we, it, it felt like if we asked for help, we wouldn't get any help, but someone would show up with a clipboard and do an inspection. But the purpose behind those royalty fees is support, not just the sharing of the best practices, but when you have a problem, you have someone you can lean on and they'll come not to rescue you, but to help, right? To offer you guidance and support or push you in the right direction or connect you with someone that can help. It's really that, that support piece, you know, but it also, there's a piece of it that's accountability, right? Because a lot of corporate brand people are doing exactly that. They're protecting the brand, especially around food safety and these kind of things. You know, their number one thing is to protect the customer. So if they come in your restaurant to do an inspection, yes, they're offering you support. They want to help you, but as well, they're holding you accountable for the systems and processes to protect the sign, to protect the brand name, the brand culture. So the next piece is now when you're part of a franchise, your valuation increases. You know, a lot of these franchises are really primed if you decide you want to exit to be consumed. You don't even have to put it up for market. You can just go to another franchisee and they'll buy you out and add it to their portfolio or add it to their company or their network. Today's episode is sponsored by Smart Systems. Are you tired of your best people being poached? You know, stolen? Smart helps you create unpoachable rock stars. Check out the link below today. Franchises will return better returns than the normal process when you go to sell your business. Now, for instance, the brand that I was in sold a very unique way when you sold a store. No other business sells this way. You would sell the business based off of the sales times a multiplier because there was such supply and demand for these businesses. Whereas a normal business will work on what's called EBITDA earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation. And what they'll do is they'll take your profit. So the, the bottom number that you're making, and they'll times it by a multiplier, which is usually based off of how the business is operating, what the future of growth is, do you have to remodel the store, these types of things. So you could take that profit and, and times it by a multiplier. Now the first option with the, the national brand, when you would take sales time a multiplier, just to show you the difference in the valuation. So let's say that the, the multiplier at the time was $1.20 just to make the math easy, and the business was doing a million dollars in sales. Instantly, that business is worth a million too, and that's what it would sell for on the market. As opposed to the EBITDA method, where if the business is bringing in $100,000 in profit at the bottom line, you know, this is after paying salaries and everything else, now it would be times by, let's say, six, that multiplier, and the business would be worth 600,000. So you can see, on the EBITDA method, sales doesn't matter, but on the franchise method, sales really come into play. So um, now that's the big piece on franchising. So these, those are the reasons why, hell yeah, right, I think you want to do a franchise. So next week, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the 10 reasons why hell no, <laughs> you don't want to do a franchise, right? What, is, uh, what does Austin Powers, the Dr. Evil say? He says, how about no? So I'm going to tell you the 10 reasons why you don't want to do a franchise. Okay, so we'll see you next week. Chopping out.